Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to another pair of World of Tanks subscriber replays. Now recently on the EU server and I assume on other servers as well, the AMX 1357 has actually been on sale. Um, this is the tier 7 premium French light tank but the only time it's been available in the past was the AMX 1357F. It was a Wargaming Grand Finals tank. And you're seeing it here, driven by Circle of Sorrow. This is a patch 922 game. And you can see it's got this um, WargamingLeague.net stuff emblazoned across the side of it, the same as the other Grand Finals tanks. Now, this was, if memory serves, I think the first Grand Finals tank, possibly the second, can't quite remember. Um, but as it's being put up for sale without that logo on the side, this is a new opportunity for people to get their hands on the tank. Now some people weren't in the game when it was first made available, some people like me were and did have the chance to get it but didn't and in my case that was due in no small part to the dirty great big wargaming logo splashed across the side. And so the fact that this version that is now coming out doesn't have this wargaming logo splashed across the side is really rather nice. So, <coughs> sorry about that, with all that um, in place, I thought it was an opportune moment to showcase a couple of AMX 1357 games. So, the first one here, this is of course the Grand Finals version, the original version of the tank. This uh, matches from patch 9.22, so the um, last patch before the game got its proper release. And we are joining Circle of Sorrow here in his AMX, running around on the Zisk. <coughs> Sorry about that. Cliff, yes, this is Cliff. I've got a bit of a cough still, um, so my apologies if I'm occasionally coughing and spluttering. So he's just coming around to the underside here of the hill. Hasn't actually found anyone, which is unusual. Normally you find a heavy tank or two are pushing down um, the nine line a little bit, but as it is, nope, nothing doing. Now what's interesting about this um, tank is, well, it's it's your typical French kind of light tank. It's got an auto loader. The mobility is reasonable, if not outstanding, and the camo values are pretty good. The depression and elevation angles, and you can see here, Circle is struggling with his elevation, are also not that impressive. So this thing gets a 57mm gun with all... Oh, how much alpha damage is it? It's 143 penetration and 90 alpha damage. Now that does not sound particularly impressive. Um, until you realise that it's packing and I think it's eight round autoloader. And the timing between shots is pretty darn quick. And what this means is this thing is kind of a little bit like a buzzsaw. It just pops, you know, comes up, pop, 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 kills something and moves on. Um, it's an interesting little machine. And ever since Wargaming rebalanced light tanks because of their policy of not changing premiums, well, this thing is actually... Um, arguably overpowered. I mean, well, certainly, relatively speaking, more powerful than it used to be because Wargaming didn't change it. And when they, quote unquote, rebalanced light tanks, they often didn't do the class many favours. Which is a little bit odd given that light tanks were never really overpowered in the first place. But there we go. What can you say? Heaven forbid there be a class in the game that actually uses skill to play. Anyway, as we can see here, Circle has not fired a single shot yet, not got any assistance damage yet. The enemy team and the friendly team are both just dying. He is trying to pull something off. Trying to feather a shot there on the ARL 44, but it's just not working. He's going to have to change, uh, move up a little bit and change position to get a shot on that guy. As there's kind of a... a not quite a ridge, but there's a raise in the ground between the two of them. Now the enemy team have let the friendly team come all the way around here, which is a bit dumb. <laughs> there we go. So, circle just pops up. One, two, three, four shots. You can see how quickly that magazine unloads. And throw a fire in there for good measure. And that ARL 44 is toast. Artillery tries to have a go at Circle there, but uh, only some stunning, which Circle actually takes out with his med pack. I think personally, 
I'd have probably let the stunning do its thing. It's going to wear off anyway, but there we go. One, two, three, and four. There's a second fire. Jesus Christ. And circle is reloading. So that T20 is probably not feeling too clever at this point. So circle's up to 781 damage, and it's in these latter parts of the game where often auto loaders become very dangerous. And by the way, did I mention that the uh, magazine reload time was none too shabby? Anyway, because in these latter parts of the game, you can run around and just clip people. You can play the real assassin, something that often you can't do earlier on in the game. So, yeah, you could call it the Assassin's Creed of tanks, except that Assassin's Creed is... Well, let's not give my opinion to Assassin's Creed. There we go. Um, Circle puts two shots there into that Tiger. Why the Tiger is sitting at base, well, I can hazard a guess because he's terrible, but, you know, top-tier tank sitting at base. He could have been doing a lot more for his team. Interestingly, Circle spots out the AMX 1375 there, the regular French Tier 7 light tank, not able to finish the guy off, unfortunately, but able to leave the guy on very low health. And Circle's only got two shots in the mag here. I must admit, I think at this point, I would be very tempted to reload the magazine, and actually, that's exactly what Circle does. So, IKV 652. <coughs> Now being spotted, circle just waiting to reload, and we'll have some blind shots at you, matey boy, old chum. There we go, and he is dead. This gun unloads its shots very quickly. I think it's half a second between shells, which is a little bit silly. Despite circle's efforts here, two kills, uh, well, more than 1,200 damage now, because there was some blind damage in there. Score lines are actually still even. Um, which is interesting. So Circle finds out that Tiger again. Let's see if we can work that guy over. There we go. Circle's not really bothering to fully aim here. He's using the rate of fire of this gun unloading in the magazine just to spray shots at the Tiger, which you can definitely do. And he's shaved a good chunk of health off that fellow. Uh, reloading the magazine, but we've got the enemy T29 over by the friendly base. There's an enemy AMX 1375 buzzing around as well, and the friendly team R2, three kills down, which is a little bit of a problem. Now, when you saw Circle kind of just unloading the gun without properly aiming, um, on the one hand, yes, that can be very useful, and it does take advantage of your quick reload, sorry, unload time. However, by the way, Circle is one versus five here. However, the thing you do have to be careful of is that often these French auto-loading light tanks don't pack a huge amount of ammunition. Goodbye, Mr. 1375. Um, now, on the one hand, this, this, this tank is a little bit deceptive because it does pack more ammunition than its counterparts, but it gets a smaller calibre gun, doing less damage, so you have to fire more shots at the bad guys in order to do your damage anyway. So, anyway, we'll see how this goes. Someone is in the base capping. It's going to be that T29, let's be honest. Uh, you don't need to be a genius to work that out. T29 is not an idiot though. He is not pulling that trigger and revealing his position. So, Circle's kind of going to have to go for it. Now, the guy was on about 350 odd health the last time we saw him. Circle has enough damage in his magazine to kill this guy. He's probably going to take one hit from the T29, but as long as he doesn't then get wrecked by artillery, that shouldn't be the end of the world. One, there goes Circle's engine, unfortunately. Um, but the T29 is dead, and Circle puts the engine back in and goes for a reload on the magazine, and there's the artillery hitting him. So, two artillery left, and the Tiger 1, who Circle was working over earlier on. 1746 damage. That we've seen so far, though we do know there is some blind damage as well on that RKV. So, Circle reacquiring high ground. <coughs> Not a bad plan at all. Um, see if you can get some more shots on these guys and oh hello Mr. Tiger 652 health so if you total up the amount of damage that this gun does it's got 720 damage in the magazine um, and I think at this point if I were circle I'd be really tempted to leave the Tiger alone and go for the artillery anyway 720 damage in his magazine which means that he would probably need every shot to kill that tiger. He might be able to donk one shot. Um, so really he wants to engage that guy at relatively close range where we can just unload the gun or engage him from enough of a distance where we can just shave some health off the guy. 
and there's Circle's entire magazine at the Tiger 1. Um, shave some health off the guy and then engage him at closer range. Now I must admit in that engagement Circle wasn't spotted. I think I'd have bothered aiming my shots a little bit more. Circle only has, well now 11, sorry, 9 rounds of armor piercing ammo left. So once he's used this magazine, he doesn't have a single full magazine anymore like this. He only has a premium magazine. He's running out of ammo, essentially. Um, and so he really... I mean, he's reloading his little magazine of three shots here to kill the tiger. But if he'd aimed those shots slightly more carefully, then... Oh, no, he's reloading his APCR. Um, then he may not have to do this in order to kill the tiger. So I do think in that particular engagement... Oh, those engagements with the tiger there. Circle has perhaps made his life more difficult than it need be. Yes, this gun can unload very, very quickly, but I think it's one of those guns where you need to choose your time. There'll be a time to just go full ham and unload the hell at people, and there'll be a time when you do actually want to aim. So go figure. Um, Circle is taking the high ground again. He's trying to spot this tiger without getting spotted out himself. It'd be really unfortunate at this point. If Circle were to um, take out the Tiger, for example, and then just get nuked by artillery. As it is, Circle seems to have decided that now is the time to go for the enemy art. Do have to be a little bit careful about where that Tiger is, of course, but uh, GW Panzer. Now, Circle, aim your shots. There we go. Three shots left in the magazine, which should be enough to take out this AMX 13. F3-1, second one bounces, third one you didn't aim properly, which means Circle only has three rounds of ammunition left to deal with the Tiger 1 and the AMX-1375. And this is going to be a bit of a massive shame, because, well, without ramming someone to death, or without some being very, very stupid, aim this shot. There we go, aim this one too. There we are. Circle is going to really struggle to take these guys out. He's got one round of ammunition left. There is the AMX 13 F3. One shot in, and the guy would have needed to. Possibly one more. A slightly high damage roll. Literally one or two shots more was all it needs. So, how's Circle going to win this now? With two minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Um, well, a ram kill would do the job, I guess. Where's that artillery? He's over there. Circle has been spotted. This guy might just shotgun him in the face here. We do have to be very, very, very careful. But if Circle can land on top of this guy... Ooh, this is going to be dicey. This is going to be really dicey. If the guy shoots and messes this up, and he has, go in for the ram kill. Take the guy out. Just don't die in the process. There we go. And Circle is able to pick up the kill on the artillery for the win. Nicely done. And breathe. Let's go and have a look at the post-game stats. Right then, here we go. That ended up being enough for Ace Tanker Arsonist. I missed the tanky burn to death, clearly. Uh, oh no, maybe it was the ARL. That would make sense. Uh, anyway, sorry. Bruiser, Duelist, 5 for effect, high caliber, Top Gun, a Pascucci's medal, and a Kolobanov's medal for emerging victorious when outnumbered 1v5 in the end. Apologies for the background noise, by the way. My cat is being a bit skits. Um, 3,457 damage done, 7 kills, 1,546 base experience, and rather a lot of medals. 56 shots fired, 47 hits, 36 penetrations. Uh, for that 3,500 damage, about 2,000 from relatively long range, two hits received, of course they're both penetrated, it's a light tank. Uh, 477 assistance damage, 53 base defence points, almost 6 kilometres travelled, and a healthy profit as well. And the only thing I'm going to say to critique Circle there in that entire game is, God damn it man, aim your shots! Aim! 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 There are times when you just want to unload and there are times when you want to aim because this is not the first replay that Circle has sent me where he ran out of ammunition. I'm thinking back to an E25 game in which he burned through all of his ammo um, because he does rather like his speculative shots. But all that said, still a very nice result there for Circle in his 1357G.
Here we go then, first replay from patch 1.0, actually. Ooh, I know. Uh, we have got Majestic Spoon here driving the AMX 1357. No G or FT or whatever the hell it was. Um, so this is the tank that has been on sale recently, certainly on the EU server. Um, it is the same as the previous tank, we just saw Circle of Sorrow driving, but without the Wargaming insignia emblazoned across the side. And you can see Majestic here has his uh, AMX in a nice shiny colour scheme. Um, here on the Siegfried line, yeah, we can see how different this map is, I know. And he's already spotted out, ooh, a 1357 and a little gin, little ginger, a little ninja jink there. Avoids the first shot from the Sherman over in the background, but he does take uh, a round in the end from that jumbo. So, this is also a tier 7 match. Uh, both of these games in when the AMX is top tier. And we're just going to see what Majestic is able to do here. Running along the ridge line to spot out some peeps and see if he can pick up some assistance damage. And an enemy 1357. Oh, and a VK over there. And Majestic's going to see if he can do some damage to them. One shot over towards the 1357. One shot bounces on the VK. And now Majestic is fully on a serious damage to this VK, although he appears to have only gotten one shot into the guy, um, which is a little unfortunate. Hello, 1357, there we go, have a shot there, and Majestic's second shot misses, so goes for a reload on the magazine, because he only had two rounds left, why not? Um, and this end of the map seems to be crawling with French light tanks, friendly 12T, friendly 1375, Majestic's 1357, enemy 1357, they're just everywhere, and 1375 appears to be targeting this 1357, this is turning into a bit of a mouthful, and Majestic is able to execute the guy. Um, but the VK takes out the 12T, but the artillery takes out the VK, and Majestic is kind of the, on kind of the only survivor from that engagement, successfully not being hit by artillery as well, hurrah. Seven rounds left in the magazine. And Majestic is just looking for things to kill. 12T there. Oh, yes. Majestic is capable of clipping that guy, but it's not an engagement he seems to want. Can't really say I blame him very much. Um, as there'd also be that Sherman still back there, still shooting him. So Majestic instead seems to like his handbrake turns. Um, spinning round and not getting shot very sensibly. Looking for anything else to shoot at, anything to kill. Oh, there's an IS here who appears to be going a little bit balls to the wall. Oh, can Majestic do something about this guy? That would be rather valuable damage and or kill. Or oh, there's a Sherman Jumbo. That works too. One shot into the Jumbo, but the Jumbo kind of gets behind some cover. And, I mean, this of course is the reworked Siegfried line. So, there seem to be certain... Um, I guess fields of fire that aren't as available as they once were. It will take a little bit of getting used to. Scoreline is 5-5 uh, between the two teams, however. Majestic's been spotted. Looks like this 12 team might want a peek. No, he's going for the Sherman, the friendly Sherman there. Um, so that Sherman is probably going to go up to the Spirit in the Sky with a 75mm of auto-loaded loving into his bum. But there's the IS and Majestic's all over that. There we go. Unloads the six rounds uh, he had left in his mag there into the guy and leaves the guy on 216 health. Nicely done. Um, and you can see this magazine is almost reloaded again. And now we've got a T-43 who seems to want to join in the action. Majestic's just trying to find a shot whilst exposing as little of his tank as he can possibly get away with. There's also the Jumbo over there who exposed his bum for a moment. And, oh, friendly Slitzvarm has gone down to the 12T. There goes the Type 64. And the friendly team is 5-7 to seven the work off, which is a little bit unfortunate. But, never fear, Majestic is here. Except when he's not, because he's running away. I can't really blame him too much. I mean, that is not particularly an engagement you really want. Although the IS has now gone down and oh, there's a nice horn in the field. Na, 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 na. Takes one hit from the NAS horn, but the NAS horn's not going to get another one in. And there we go, Majestic just executes that guy. Nice little ambush, although who was ambushing who? 
I'll leave that to you guys to work out. So, if we just have a look, just have a look around for a moment. Patch 1.0, the maps are very pretty. Like, very, very pretty. I mean, the core gameplay is obviously the same, but it looks the part. Anyway, um, scoreline is 8 9. And Majestic is just coming over this hill. Can he hunt down some artillery? That would be quite nice. He did spot out the SU-8, who then promptly scarpered. Again, can't really blame the artillery for uh, getting the hell out of Dodge. I mean, who really wants a light tank with an auto they're just ripping them to shreds? Oh, there's some terrain there, Majestic. Be careful. Uh, ever since patch 1.0 went live, some of the terrain has really been giving people problems. Um, so be a little careful. Majestic. Trying to find this SU-8, but the SU-8, I think, has long since gotten out of dodge. It's a uh, pretty fast artillery piece. I say that. There he is. Okay, one, two, three, bye. Who else wants some? KV-3. Oh, first two shots miss. One, two, third one bounce. And that leaves Majestic, of course, uh, reloading. There we go. I'm going to say the same thing I said uh, about Circle last game. Aim your shots. With those shots more carefully aimed, that could have been a dead KV-3. Now, as it turns out, the artillery nails the KV-3 anyway. But, yeah, it's choosing those moments to aim your shots and those moments to just go full buzzsaw on people. Um, anyway, Majestic has been spotted. Hello, Mr. Sherman Jumbo. It looks like Majestic being spotted hasn't done you any good, has it? You're dead. Oh, there's a Jagdpanzer. What a shame. And have the last shot. Uh, he has a go. Three rounds left in the uh, AP, so he goes for loading a magazine of APCR instead. The Flat Panzer appears to be chasing Majestic, but I mean, a Flat Panzer's not slow, but, but it's not going to catch a 1357. That just ain't happening. Majestic goes right the way around, and now this Flat Panzer has Majestic and a T3485 to deal with. One, and there goes the Flat Panzer. SU100 and T43 are all over here. Yeah. Six rounds left in the magazine. So that is, what, 540 damage? Magazine damage. SU-100 has exploded. Thank you, artillery. And that just leaves this T-43. How much health is he on? 862. Majestic can't really clip the guy, but there's a T-3485 round there as well. So he can certainly put a serious amount of hurting into the fellow and that would give the T-3485 a bit of a hand. And the two of them, well plus the other two artillery, surely should be able to take this T-43 down without too much difficulty. The other thing they've updated of course with patch 1.0 by the way is the music. So, one, two, three, four, two rounds left in the mag. That's awkward. Majestic goes for the reload. There's only two minutes left on this match. It is, of course, an assault game here on the Siegfried line. So Majestic going for the reload. And the reload is approaching. Three quarters done. And one bounce, two bounce, three, four. And if Majestic hadn't been auto-aiming, that could have been a kill on the T-34 as well. But as it was... Really nice game there from Majestic in his AMX 1357. Let's go and have a look at the post-game stats for this one. So there we go. That game was enough for Ace Tanker for Majestic there, along with Bruiser, Duelist, Fighter, Fire for Effect, and a High Caliber Medal. 3,145 damage done. 5 kills, 1,474 base experience. Easily topping either team by either parameter. 47 shots fired, 41 hits. 36 penetrations for that damage count, all from pretty close range. Two hits received, two pens. Again, what do you expect? It's a light tank at the end of the day. Um, 627 assistance damage, four and a half kilometers traveled. Nice amount of profit, though it looks like Majestic has been a little bit caught out by the it's a new patch, our ammunition is going to default to reloading for gold instead of credits thing. And a new tank, to be fair. So, 50 gold on top of that, which is a little bit of a sting for Majestic there. All told, though, a really nice game. I'm going to say a similar thing to what I said in the previous game. And this seems to be one of those tanks where you do really have to be very careful um, 
Choosing your moments to fully aim and choosing your moments to just hold down the left mouse button and obliterate people. You have a similar issue in many fast firing guns, but in common with a lot of other French light tanks, this thing does get a kind of limited ammunition supply, so you do need to be aware of that. Anyway, there's the AMX 1357 for you. Make up your own minds as to whether you wish to get your hands on it, given the opportunity or not. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed that couple of replays there. Big thank you to both Circle and Majestic for sending them in. And I shall catch you guys in another video. And I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.